Good evening. We have a nice video we want to give you today in this one. Again, I know on one and other one I wanted to say, I said I wanted you to think, well, this is another one that I'd like you to think. But I want you to pay attention to this one because I don't want you to just watch this video. I want you to learn this video. I want this to be something you know, like I know it, you know it. And it's very important because when you're in conversation with people, they need to know that what you have is real. So this video is one of those videos that you could show them, look, ain't nobody doing this like that. So it could really show people that this thing is real. So I would like you to take it from that point of view and look at it from that. And it's glad I'm glad to be with you guys again on this day. And I wanted it to be the best that we possibly could have here, okay? Because I know you are chosen people. And I feel good when I'm in an audience of a chosen people, okay? Now, the name of this video is Beside Me There Is No Savior. And I know how we've been brought up in life. We've been brought up knowing, grow up, most, a lot of us have been brought up in the church, and some of us haven't, but we've been knowing that Jesus, the Christ, uh, they named him Jesus Christ, uh, was the Savior. And the Latin name was not J-E-W-I-S. The Latin name was spelled L-E, I think, something O-U-S or something to that point. I was just writing it down earlier today, so I know. And it's, it's not that. So what I'm doing now, since we're teaching a new Christianity, the fullness of the gospel, I'm not here trying to debate to individuals in the audience whether or not Jesus is real or Jesus ain't. Jesus is real, but not how they made him real. Okay, so I'm not against Jesus. Jesus is the messenger. It's a code name for the messenger. So I cannot argue about the messenger, but I can argue about the fact of how they have lied to us in these spiritual experiences that we have embarked on. Not only us, our parents and our great parents and, and many before that, they're just people of color. It's all. See, to get it, to, to make it work right for them, they had to do peoples of color and Eurocentric peoples as well in order to make it stick the way that they wanted to make it stick. So we're dealing with this. Beside me, there is no Savior. Now, most people look at that, they're going to say, well, you must be talking about Jesus. No, I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the one that Jesus took the priesthood after, Melchizedek. Melchizedek was the priest of the Most High God. He was formed by God. He didn't have a mother or a father. It was formed by God. He's a God, man. In the Egyptian literature, he's known as thought. At the time of the Renaissance, he was known as Horus. So he have a name, different name, through history. But the Bible captured him in his Egyptian name, but they put it in a language uh, you would call you the term Hebrew typology. And you also use the term transliteration that you could not know unless you understood codes. This Bible, they have told you on many of the uh, spiritual channels 20 years ago, 25 years, 30 years ago, the Bible was in code. But no one decided they're going to translate it or find out the codes to translate it. And the ones who really have a translation, they're the aristocrats and nobility class at the top. And they're not going to give you this. They're not going to uh, translate this for you because you're not a part. They consider you not a part of them. Just because you're a human being don't mean you're a part of them. And many of y'all should know that. Uh, some of those people wouldn't. I don't care. You could be white as snow. They ain't going to let you marry their family because they about that blood, that bloodline. And you have to see that. Now, what we got to see is that this is as saying that beside me there is no Savior. Now, we're going to see this in the Bible, Isaiah 43, 10 to 12. And this is uh, uh, beside me there is no Savior, 2021 to 2043. Those are the remaining years we have before we have to be in that promised land. That by 2043, we have to be in that promised land location. And we got to understand that. Isaiah 43, 10 to 12, okay? Thought, ye may know 
and believed me. Now what do I say? Thought. You're going to see in the Bible, you're going to see that. T-H-A-T. It's not that, it's thought. It's no that, that is not a name. Thought. When you put the right words there, you're going to see it speak out to you. Thought. Ye may know and believe me and understand thought. I am he. Thought. I am he. Before me, there was no God form. Now, you can find out that he's being machesty. There's nobody form. There wasn't no God form before thought. Thought was formed by God from just not mom and daddy, it just formed him and brought put him on human and a human body and sent him to the planet. And thought being on the planet, Abraham, who is Machelet, Abraham paid as the story goes, Abraham paid a tenth of his tidings to Machelet, which is thought. You're gonna know that, okay? Now, it says, before me there was no God form. Now, also I gotta tell you, you need to understand this other part of this God thing. Uh, in uh, Greek, uh, the word for neta, they didn't have a word for neta, so they used the word God. So neta is the true word that you use, but since the Greek took over everything ever since Alexander the Great and came all the way down into Rome and the US century nation today, we've been using the word God. But the true word is neta, not God. Okay, and we have to understand that. Now, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the Lord. Now, this is the thought saying. I, even I am the Lord. This is thought talking. And beside me, there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved and I have shown when there was no strange God among you. Now, what is he saying? Now, during the time of, uh, of the Egyptian Empire and during the time of the, the other empires all over the world, because you have to read, there's a queen that they talk about of Egypt where she ruled all seven continents. And she traveled in, I, I use the term Asher. I don't, I don't use that term flying saucers and all that. I use the term Asher because God has permitted me through whoever controlling that airship to be in there in a vision to understand that there is such thing as an airship. Big, big, biggest three football fields. Now, I don't expect you to get into that, but yet some people's out there in the audience, they know what I'm talking about. They have experience seeing something like that in the air. And it could, it could show you, and you're in there, it could fly in the past, present and future. That's what it's like. It could travel in that time traveling thing. And so that's some technology we haven't gotten yet. But our, our society, our government and stuff, they know it's there. They know it's there. And I just throw that in there at you because God showed me something in that trip and I, I'm going to share it to you, with you one day. But right now, it, it just ain't the time. But it ensured me that we will get our land. We will have our territory. And that's what it ensured me. That's why you heard me in the last two or three weeks talk about we have to deal with a, a, in a judge, in a justice situation about the land. The Hebrew Cherokee uh, nation, that land mass of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. Because it showed me in that vision that we're going to deal with this in the world courts. And we're going to win. And we're going to have our territory. Because it's our land. And they done took our land from us. You can't take another nation land and just forget about it and it's all over with. No. You know, you've got international courts about that. And this will be in that level. It's not nothing you take to the Supreme Court or Justice Court of America, because that's one side when you're talking about this. We're going to take this to the world court. We will get our land. And that's what they were showing me in that airship. That we are to have our land. It ain't no devil, nobody else going to keep us from getting it. It's already, it's already made out like that. So when I read, when God said he'll, he will give us 
put us in our own land, I understand that this is land that we already have. It's already ours. And when Lincoln tried, the Johnson ran us, took the Indians and being the native off their land and ran them out west in the uh, Trail of Tears, then Lincoln tried to go and straighten it out by giving us, putting us back in that same territory. And people don't know that. Putting us back in that same territory with that Hebrew nation. See, those native people were black people. Y'all need to go on the internet and start looking at people's, the, the Cherokees that lived in that area before the 1830s and show you some pictures, pictures of the houses and stuff like that. These people had some nice looking houses for that time. It wasn't no, no tents and stuff. The tents, the teepees and stuff were used because they was traveling out west. That's why they used them. But they had houses just like you got houses now. It was a nation of people, a resident, town square and all that stuff. They had all their stores and everything, my people. They was very, very loved people. They was Hebrews. But they don't tell you that. They try to tell you, oh, they were Indian, da, 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 da. No, see, Hollywood, get out of Hollywood. Do your research and start seeing who these people really are because you are those people. When you say they talking about, boy, we brought so many over from Africa and brought them, they ain't lying they behind off. You know, first of all, they have the ships capable of bringing you across the water. You know, when you really do your homework, you'll find out that you've been lied to left and right. But another thing, let's deal with the thing, the thing that's written that you could see. They said that we had... They brought 12, oh, in America, North America now, not South America, not all of They have 12.5 million of us that they brought over here. Okay, that's what they got on record now. Now, that was, that was during that uh, 100, 200 year period of time, 250 year period of time. Now, I want you to watch some very closely. Now, they said, oh, they breeded the blacks and they had children and, and the plantation only had children. So when it got to uh, around 1812, something like that, they passed a law between Britain and, and Spain, passed a law to not bring no more blacks uh, into the, uh, uh, out from Africa into the, they didn't really say Africa, they just say no more blacks into the North American continent now. I want you to watch this very carefully now, because you got to start studying now, because you, you people been lying to you left and right, you've just been biting it because somebody said, okay, now look at this now. Now they multiply, so you got, during the time of the census, now, you went from 12,500, 12, and at the census, in, eight, in 1890, now, look at the census in 1890. And the census in 1890, you only have but two and a half million. Whoa, what happened to that other 10 million people? But then, but then, I want you to watch this. But from 1890 until now, you got over 45 million. 45 million. So within that period of time, come on. In 100 something years, you got 45 million. So you got 42, 43, roughly 43 million more in that period of time. But that all that other time, you had less from 12 million five to two million five. Somebody lying to you called black folks. I'm gonna tell you something about us. We're gonna increase, we don't decrease. Okay? So right there, I'll let you know is something wrong with them numbers, is something wrong with all this. And we're talking about the census now. We're talking about the census. We ain't talking about no this and that. We're talking about the US census in 1890. So you need to do your homework and find out what was happening. See, you were having insurrections and them soldiers, they was taking them, them soldiers were taking them Indians and, and, and they were taking them Indians and using them as prisoners of war. People say, well, I can't find no record of it. You ain't looking the right way. You got to dig for stuff like this. It ain't gonna be on the surface. You wanna find something? Go into the archives. Do not try to just go read a book and say, well, this is what so-and-so says, so I don't see that. I can't find that. Come on. You ain't dealing under the right thing. We are people in this organization. We believe in research. You got to go beyond some book somebody wrote. You got to go into research stuff. And you got to go into archives and find stuff. And you'll see things. You'll see things. See, the Hebrews, them uh, uh, Cherokees, they were Hebrews. 
But they don't want to tell you that. See, when they talk about TV, they never discuss their religion. They always talk about the Indians with the feathers and the teepee and all that. They never, I ain't seen one time that they show the Cherokee Nation and them houses that they had. I haven't seen them one time. Now you go on the internet for yourself and do your own search and ask for that, what the houses that, that they lived in before 1830, 1829, and they'll show it to you. But you ain't going to see it on no TV and on no movie. Oh, they're not going to show you that now. Because then it done changed the story. The storyline done changed. And when the storyline done changed, then you see the lies, then you realize what time it is. That's why I tell you, check me, do your homework. Do your homework. It's time out for watching television and all this other stuff and not doing some homework. So we need to do it now. Yo, come on, we'll just go on now. But uh, Psalm 34, 22, and the Lord redeemed the soul of his servants. And none of them thought trust in him shall be dissolved, desolated, desolate. Okay. Now, what is this saying? Now, the Lord redeemed the soul of his servants, and none of them, them thought. Now, remember, he said them thought. When you see them thought or uh, Elijah thought, that means it's a group of people that are connected to thought. So you see, them thought. That means his servants, them thought, the ones that follow in thought, believe in thought. Trust in him shall not be desolate. Okay? And we got to see that. Empty, a void, and all this other stuff. You got to see that. You got to understand that because it's very important to understand that. Because thought is the Savior, and thought is going to take care of his people. He's going to do that. And I know many people never knew thought until they started listening to this organization. you got to understand thought. If, if you prayed in time past to Jesus or to God in the name of Jesus, okay, and you had a pure heart when you did that, thought is going to make sure your prayer is answered. See, thought ain't like regular human beings. No, he's a God, man. See, he know you've been deceived. He know that you've been lied to. And he know if you would have knew this truth way back then when you prayed, your head would have been right there and you'd have been knowing that you part of that them thought. You knew that. He know you to know that. So he answered anyway. That's why I said rain on the just as well, so it's unjust. And another scripture say, well, God bless, he's going to bless you anyway because of your heart. So a lot of times people say, well, I didn't get my house under no thought. I got it under Jesus. Yes, and thought was the one who gave it to you. Jesus couldn't give you nothing. He's a messenger. He couldn't give you nothing. That's not his duty. So God bless you through thought. And that's how you got it. Now, you may not want to accept that, but it ain't about what you want to accept. It's about truth. And you live long enough, or when you go on the other side, this truth will verify itself that it's real. And you have to understand that. This come out of the Bible. Die. This come out of the Bible. Where it say this at? Where this part at? Let's deal with it. I, even I am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. This come out of Isaiah 43, 10 through 12. I didn't, this, this came out of the Bible, people. I'm just translating it for you. So if you want to argue with something, go to your Bible and argue it. I'm just the messenger. I'm the messenger. And you need to see this. Now, before we go any further, Philip Davis, Antoinette McMullen, Leon James, Marwin G, uh, Amelia, Amara, Amara, okay, I think I got that right, Amara Marsh, Amelia Sinclair, Teddy White, and Kevin Hard, Hardzell, Hardzell, okay, now, these are individuals that I want their name to be known because they go with the rest of the list of individuals who have 
in time past and still lives supporting this organization. So I want you to know that we have to put these people in their right perspective place. God love them. I love them. This organization love them. And that's, that's good. Okay, Matthew 24, 37 to 39. But as the days, okay. But as the days, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now you got to listen to this. For as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days, in the days thought were before the flood. Now, what thought was before the flood, thought always been here. Thought always been here for, humanity, for mankind. He always been here to do the things necessary to guide man along the way. Thought is Machadet, which is the high priest. And we have to see this. Now, let's deal with this, okay? They was eating and drinking. Now, what are they eating? What was the complaint? See, at this time, it's talking about us, because it's talking about just as the time of Noah should it also be the time of the coming of the Son of Man. That's his right now, the messenger, okay? Now, what are they eating? They're eating from the king table, okay? They're eating from the king table. I was eating from the king table. All of us at time at front of the king table unless we were brought up in a certain family because the fact that God tells us do not eat the meat thereof, the flesh thereof, with the blood thereof, and we was eating it. A lot of us. Some are still doing it. Now, because I'm saying this lecture don't mean you just stop eating a certain way. No, no, no. You got to work towards this. You got to first understand why you don't need to eat certain things. And as you understand that, you can move forward. Now, what it's saying is that God had told man, the flesh thereof or the blood thereof, if you eat it, you will surely die. Now, he didn't say he didn't give it to you. He said, just like I give you the green herb, I give you every moving thing too. But he said, if you eat that stuff, that blood stuff, with the blood thereof, you will surely die. And what do it mean? People think you're talking about you'll die right off. No, no, no. I mean, you won't have the life you have. You couldn't live that longevity that you should be living and be a good old age. Mentally, it, it will damage you from being able to be, to, to strive at that mental ca capability that you normally would strive to, okay? Because you got another animal, another being energy inside your body. And we have to know this and know how to get over this and be able to move forward. And that's very important. Now, what does it say? They will eat and drink, marry and give it into marriage. Okay, now let's deal with marriage and giving into marriage. Now, we could deal with this in many different ways. We know that we have a lot of divorces, okay? But marriage and giving into marriage, marriage, we have marriages that ain't, ain't, ain't what God desired to have. We have same-sex marriages just just that's not God's will. And we have laws. We have laws that give uh, individuals a right to do so. God ain't with that. And people say, well, I do what I want to do. Yeah, you can do what you want to do. And nobody say you could not, just like you told them about the eating. You could eat these stuff, but it's not what I desire for you to do. And you could do these things, but it's not what God desire for you to do. And in this new, this paradigm shift that's, that's sought up into this reset, you do it if you want to do it. But you're not going to stay on this planet very long doing this kind of stuff. And you got to see that. Because they got all kinds of disease going on. They got all this and that and that. Sometimes you ain't going to be able to escape some of that stuff. See, ain't none of us invincible. And we got to understand that. It's very important to know these things so you could do the right things and move forward. Now, let's see that. And now, I want you to see something also where it say down here, okay? Married and given in marriage until the day thought Noah. Who was thought Noah? Who was thought Noah? Thought Noah is the messenger. They say that uh, 
As the days of Noah was, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So who is that? Thought Noah, the Son of Man. Thought Noah. Okay? That means the Noah type person is coming. Thought Noah. Okay? Entered into the art. Now, people look at that. They didn't say art, they say ark. <laughs> you don't understand. You got to understand Hebrew typology. You got to understand the literature. If you see A R K, and you got to understand what what is A R K? A R K is A R T. And what did they do in typology, Hebrew typology, and transliteration? They took the K here and they put it this way because the initial understand the initials must understand what's going on. So you got that. You got this K here. You take that line. You put that line there. You take this in. You put it there. You take this. You put it there. They go here. T. If you go and the, uh, you look at art, but you go in the uh, in the Latin capital uh, for the T, you got a line there and one there. That's what you got this and that. You got a line there and one there. And you have to understand this stuff because it's real. It's, it's there. But you got to know how to translate it and know how to understand it. Now, 39, 39, say, and know not until the flood came and took and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, what is it saying to us right now? What is it saying to us right now? Is a flood water going to come? See, this is the misunderstanding. People think, well, like Noah did, it must be a flood. Then other scriptures say it won't be a flood. It's fine next time. So, so what is it really saying? See, the flood got to be translated. The flood, you got to look at the effects of something. What do flood do to the body? Because you got to go back and all these, little, all these verses got to be rattling around in your head at the same time. Jesus said he must cut time short of the no flesh or be saved. It also say Noah, the time of Noah, so the man time is going to be like the time of Noah. So what is going on? Then they say something like the time of Lot and the time of Jonah. So what is this trying to say? What is these scriptures trying to say to me? To get me to understand this flood thing. The effects of a flood. What do the effects of a flood do? Let's look at it now. Noah effects flood. Fluid in the lungs. Fluid in the lungs. See, a flood can't kill you unless it get the fluid in the lungs. And when it get the fluid in the lungs, you can't breathe. Now you got to see what is happening to us today that cause fluid in our lungs and could keep us from breathing. That's what it's saying to you. Let's deal with it. COVID-19 pandemic. Let's deal it now. Let's deal with it because you got to understand this. See, you looking for a flood-like thing to come with water and, and, and all this other stuff when it's trying to show you the effects. You got to translate this. The effects of it. Fluid in the lungs, keeping you from breathing. The same effect as you was in a, 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 a bunch of, in a whole thing of water and you couldn't breathe. And you're getting water in your lungs and you can't breathe. It's the same effect. And that's what you got to see. And it's a pandemic. It's a pandemic. The flood is a pandemic. Now let's deal with it. COVID-19 pandemic. The lungs become full with fluid and inflate, leading to breathing difficulties. For, listen to it now, for some people's breathing problems can become severe enough to require treatment at the hospital with, with what? Oxygen. Or even a ventilator. See, we got to understand this kind of stuff, people. If you sitting there waiting for a flood to come and flood, you know, like they do in Louisiana or some other place, flood, that ain't what it's talking about. It's talking about when the flood came, like no time, it was all over the earth. What is earth in the Bible? What is this we on? We on Turtle Island. This is Turtle Island. And it's also known as Earth. The United States have a pandemic all over what? The Earth, all over it. 
It has a flood effect all over it. People dying left and right because of not being able to breathe, okay? Because fluid in their lungs, come on, they're still with it. And see, they're not, the minister's not breaking this down to you like this so you can know what time it really is. You got to know what time it really is because it's just that important to know what time it really is, okay? Let's look at the book. Now, I want you to see something in the book or something I want you to know. And it's on page, on page 93, 94. It's a chart on 93, 94. It's also on the other book as well. Black Nostradamus, Prophecy of the American Future. This came out in 2009. This one came out in 2006, okay? And I want you to see something because it's important for you to see this. It's a chart dealing with the economy of America from 2000 to 2020. That's 21 years when you count 2000, okay? And what it do, it show you economic, good, bad, risk, or bad. It show you natural disaster, good, bad, risk, or bad. And you're gonna see that over on this next board. But what I want you to pay attention to is this right here, thank you. I need you to see this right here. In the beginning, we had terrorist war deal with cow, Ken, and this dream is, is seen out of uh, out of uh, Joseph interpreting the king's dream, Pharaoh's dream. And you're gonna see this gonna be, show you good, bad, and grievous to bad, and gonna start at the year 2000. The first part gonna be cow, terrorist war, dealing with the economy. And then the next part is gonna deal with natural disasters. And you need to see that. Now, what we what we got, the reason I'm showing you that, I'm showing you what this pandemic is all about, is not under natural disasters. And I want you to see that. It started with terrorism war, and now it ends with terrorism war. You need to see this very carefully. In, in the beginning of that 21 year period, we had a good year, we had a surplus. And then we had a bad year, 9-11, then in 2002, Bruce the bad year war. Now, we didn't go into Iraq until uh, 2003, but the preparation for Iraq, see, you gotta understand, when they shoot the first bullet, it's not when they started the war. They actually started the war when they took their butt over there and put all them men and them troops over there. And they started that in 2002. When they started going and loading them troops over there, that was wartime right there. You know, they don't waste their time to wait to the first bullet. They over there now, they done kicked off the war. And then they attacked Iraq in March of uh, 2003. So you're gonna see that. Also, this one you're gonna see, the ending part of that, you're gonna land on, on uh, cow terrorists and war. That's 2018, 2019, and 2020. Don't you see this? And Trump was in, in, in there. And 2018 was a good year. 2019 was a bad year. And 2020 was a gruesome bad year. Now I want you to look over here. I want you to see this. This is what brought the algorithm on. There have nobody, no one ever taught you 21 years of the history of no nation and it been 100% accurate. No one. And they didn't like that. Because that was letting you know that there's truths in the Bible that the regular church environment don't know and won't teach. Okay? And they do not want you and others to be led this way and it's going to mess up their religious thing that they done had going for over 2,000 plus years. And see, you need to know that this is the fullness of the gospel. You need to know the truth about what this book is really saying. And you need to get on board. Let's deal with it, okay? Let's deal with it. You're gonna see this gonna be on one of my previous lectures called The Great Exodus, Fall of America, okay? The Great Exodus, Fall of America. That video got 37 thousand hits within probably three months or so, and then they throw that on all of them. They throw it on all of them. And from then on, they wouldn't let no more than 2,000, most, 
2,000 some years on any videos because they did not want this type of knowledge to be known to the people. Okay? You need to start seeing these truth people. You need to start backing an organization that's going to tell you the truth. You need to do that. If you say you are a child of God, you need to start doing, stepping up to the plate and being who you are. Okay? You can't run from this. You don't see me running. I'm not running. I'm running into it because I have a responsibility to do. I have a responsibility to teach you guys the truth. And that's what I'm here for. Now, let's look at this. We're going to look at this. The great exodus, fall of America. Okay. Now, the first one in there is the cow. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you a little preview of the dream. Uh, Joseph was in Egypt at the time, as the story goes. And no one could translate King, the king's dream, the pharaoh's dream. And the butler uh, and the uh, baker, but the butler knew that Joseph had translated the dream for him before. And he told uh, the pharaohs about, pharaoh about Joseph. And they called him in out of prison, etc., where it was. They called him in in order to translate the dream, and Joseph translated the dream. And the storyline go that by him translating the dream, the Pharaoh made him the president over that region, that area. And he also gave him a territory for his family to be rulers in called Goshen. And this is based on what the story is. You're going to see the story say good, one good, one bad, but you're not going to see groups of badness. Why? Because you got to go in there as an issue and translate the whole vision all over again so you can see what it's really saying. And when you see what it's really saying, this is what you come up with, okay? Because if you just read it, it says seven years of good, seven years of bad, and it don't talk about the bad eating the good, the other seven years of groups of bad. So you got to know that. That's why you have to put yourself into it and really study this. It says study this to show thyself approved. A, right one that right, a workman that rightly divide the word of truth need not be ashamed. And you have to be in that state of mind. Now, the first one deal with cow, and you got to know what time it's going to start. He said the second day, after the second day. Okay, after the second day, mean the second millennium. After the second millennium is our time right now. Christianity was in two, from uh, zero, they say, to uh, 2000, uh, to 2000, which is 2000 years. Now, the two days, now we're in the third day. So, we're at that time, after the second day. So, you look at it from that angle. Now, what do we have? In the year 2000, it's going to be good, bad, groups are bad, good, bad, groups are bad. Economics, terrorist war, natural disasters. disasters. Economic, terrorist war, natural disasters. It's going to flow that way, and you need to see that. Now, in the beginning, 2000, Clinton was in power. It was a good year. You got to see, good, bad, groups are bad. It was a good year. We have a surplus. 2001, Bush became president. It was a bad year, what we had, 9-11. Okay. 2002, Bush was in power. We had a grievous a bad year. What? War on the right. Getting ready to war on the right. And not only war on the right, our economy got bad because it was spending, spending, spending with all the security measures and all that in order to, keep, to fight terrorism, as they say. To fight terrorism. Okay. The next three is coin, deal with natural disasters. 2003, Bush was in power. That was a good year. No major storms. 2004, Bush was in power. It was a bad year. Why was it a bad year? Francis, Ivan, Gene, uh, Kurt, all these storms came up the coast of Florida. Okay? 2005, Bush was in power. It was a grievously bad year. Let's deal with it now. Because this is the history that go with this, and you can see it. Katrina, Emma, uh, Rita, Wilma, all these storms was happening at that time. And you know Katrina was a bad storm. It was bad because the labor broke and the labor broke and it flooded all that area. And you'll see that was really so bad. Nobody forget about Katrina because they had an uproar about how many people were not happy with Katrina. And you need to see that. Now, the next one deal with the cow again, terrorist war, okay? 2006, Bush was in power. It was a good year. No major economic problems at that time, 2006. But what happened in 2007? Bush was in power. Bad year. Failure of key businesses. 
We had many key businesses uh, uh, falling, folding. You had a problem with the banks and all this other stuff. You had a lot of stuff going on. But what happened in the next year? A grievously bad year. You had the stock market crash. Great recession. See, you think that, that, that when you got the thing right and you're following God and God's showing you the revelation of the Bible, these revelations don't lie. Because I'm getting to something at the end, but I want you to see, these revelations do not lie. And that's why I made it big for you to see. So when you get ready to show somebody, they can check me and you can see the truth in all this. You need the truth now, people. This is no time. This is like a time of Noah, Lot, and Jonah. And you need to know the effects of all three of them. So you'll know how it applies to our time of human history now. It's very important, my people. You need to know these things. Okay? Now, the next one we had was natural disaster. Corn is part of nature. Natural disaster. 2009, Obama was in power that year. It was a good year. No major storm. 2010, Obama was in power. Bad year, earthquake in Haiti. Everybody know about that earthquake in Haiti. Because most people think that the heart program caused that. All them people died. All them people died in Haiti. And we got to see this. All them people died in Haiti. We need to see that. Okay? Then, 2011, grievously bad, the Missouri tornadoes. Man, them tornadoes were kicking up stuff, taking the rooftop off. Not only houses, they were taking the rooftop off. Industrial buildings. Them tornadoes were not playing. They were coming one behind the other, behind the other. Anybody that lived in that territory will tell you that was a grievously bad year with these tornadoes and these snowstorms and all this stuff happening. People, the Bible don't lie. And our history don't lie because you got to take the Bible and apply the history to it to see the truth is the mother. A revelation, my people. A revelation you have never got from them other individuals out there because they got the father in the footsteps of the messenger of God. You've been dealing with prophets of Baal and you don't even know it. And you think they're the best out there and all of them follow the leader and everything they learn. They learn it from, from their professor and from that, that. And none of them going, they're not like the guy who started Apple where he said, bump the professor, let's go in the garage and do this thing. They ain't like them kind of people. They ain't like them. And you got to understand, you need them type of people that are going to go in the garage. They already know more than the professor know. They're going to go in the garage and come out, garage and come out with something. And all you are participating in. You got to see this, my people. You got to see the truthism. Come on. You got to know the truthism. Let's deal with the next one. Okay? We got the terrorist war deal with the economy. Obama. Good year. 2012. Good year. Wasn't no major economic problem in 2012. 2013. A bad year. Wage problem. You had wage problems. What was happening? They was laying off people from different jobs and then they got to go get a new job and they stuck with uh, lower pay. You know, done got rid of them off that and they, they stuck with lower pay. pay. They done went, you got people, one lady I talked about, she was making what? Twenty-something dollars an hour? She had to get a security job making like $10, $12 an hour. Then she had to get another job and making about $8 an hour. Then she had to get another job. She had time to spend with the children. It was that kind of situation back in that day. And people say, well, they're coming back to work, coming back to work, but what they working on? What happened to all that money they're supposed to be getting? Some of them ain't going to get a raise ever since all this time here, all the way down there. They ain't going to get a raise, people. Some of them ain't got a raise yet. They ain't got a raise yet. 20 years. Some people, now, you know, so if I was on a job 20 years, no, nah, I ain't going to tell you all that because that's not my business. I can't tell you what to do. I really can't. And I ain't gonna step like that. So I'm gonna leave that to your discretion. Okay? Let's deal with it now. We got Obama, grievously bad. Let's deal with that. The national debt, 21.97. Just say like $22 trillion. Now we don't went from a deficit, a surplus, to a debt of $21.97 trillion. Now, what you find out is that that's what they say, government say, but you got the scholars say it's higher than that. 
It's like 40 something, 50 something trillion dollars. But but you we just gonna go with what the government say. Okay? That's still a lot. 21.9, just say 22 trillion dollars. That's a long ways and a lot. Okay? And I'm gonna tell you something I heard even after then. They say about in the next fifth from uh, a certain time, in the next 10 to less than 20 years, they're gonna be up to $89 trillion. That's their forecast. Okay, check me so you can find out yourself. But I know, I, I think it's 10 years, but I don't want to go with 10 if I'm not too sure. I just push it to 20. But if you look at $89 trillion, whoa, man. Mm -mm -mm. That's something else. We got to understand this. The next one, call it natural disasters, bombers still in power. Eight year term. We see 2015 a bomb, good year. No major storms. No major storms. In 2015. 2016, Obama in power. Bad year. The blizzard, tornadoes, and wildfire. Come on now. Look at your history books of your little past history. You'll see blizzards, 2016, blizzard, tornado, and wildfire dominate that year. See, the Bible ain't gonna lie. The Bible gonna tell the truth. You just gotta have somebody who know how to translate it. That's what you need. And you'll know this truth. You'll know what's going to happen before it happens. All this stuff here was known before it happened. The book came out in 2006. This book here came out in 2006. This book here came out in 2009. You see? This came out in 2006. The other one came out in 2009. The revelation was revealed in around 2001, 2002. So all this stuff was known, but it was compiled in a book by 2006. But this stuff was known way back then. And it kept on going. Even if the book came out in 2006, if I'm good at what I'm doing, as they say, then all this in should be accurate as well, not just the past. And all of this been 100% accurate. That's when you know you got a real revelation from God. And that's what you got to see, my people. A real person with the real revelations of God before you, letting you know what's going to happen before it happens. You need that at this time of human history. Let's deal with it now. Now let's deal with 2017. Obama. Ah, Trump now. Obama out of the picture now. President Trump, 2017. Grievously bad. He came at the time of a grievously bad year. Now what was the Baddest thing happened that year, Harvey, hurricane. See, some people say Harvey was worse than Katrina. People thought Katrina was the worst one. But no, Katrina was in 2005, Katrina, but Katrina wasn't as worse as Harvey. Harvey, the economics on Harvey was $180 billion in damage, man. That's a lot of money, $180 billion in damage. And that's not include what the people have spent out of their own pocket that did not have insurance. See, the storms got worse and worse and worse. The economy kept going down, down. All you got to do is go and look at the GOP, look at the economy from this time, and they got a chart. You'll see each year got worse, 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 worse. It kept getting worse, okay? Because this revelation had to be fulfilled. See, when you're doing the chart, you don't know what event's going to happen. You just do the chart, and then it fills in the gap. And it's known as good, bad, grievously bad, uh, natural, it, good, bad, grievously bad, economic war, good, bad, grievously bad, natural disasters. And when these things start happening, you just fill it in the gap because it's there. So it's telling you what's going to happen. It don't know the name of Emma. It don't know the name of Katrina. But it know that it's natural disasters. It know that it's economic problems dealing with terrorists and war. And that's what you have to see. It's going to give you that. It's going to give you these truth, my people. Now let's deal with the next one. Let's deal with the next one. Now the R. 2018, Trump. Good year. No major economic problems. Trump going around, oh, this is the best economy says so and so. I done brought it back, this is that and that. Okay? It wasn't too bad, but they weren't talking about that debt that they still owe. That debt ain't went nowhere. That debt, 21, it done moved higher than that by the time it got down there to Trump. 
That debt was way higher than that. When Trump came in the picture, it was way higher than that. It was above $21.97, $22 trillion. Okay? They ain't changed. They still spending money. It just wasn't so bad of a year that time. Let's get into next year, 2019. 2019, the Feds cut the interest rate to zero. Now, when the Fed cut the interest rate to zero, what's happening then? They begging for somebody to borrow some money, get some money. We need to work this economy. We need to get this thing right, my people. So the Feds do this and that, and they just do what they can. And, and at the same time, they're talking, well, we got so many people's employed, et cetera, et cetera. See, what they do is that so many people be tired of going down trying to get employment. So what they do, they just go and stay with mom, auntie, cousin, friend, and do whatever they could do, hustling in order to make ends meet. You know, they be off the books, as they say. But it don't be that it's right. It's still having problems, my people. China, GOP surpassing the United States and all that. Then that caused problems for the United States. The United States don't want that. United States is a mean nation too, people. It's a military nation. It is, it's an aggressive nation. And this aggressiveness is going to show up in the next one, the next year. Let's deal with it now. Trump, 2020, grievous the bad. What happened? COVID. The first case of COVID in the United States flared up in January. Am I right? Yeah, January of 2020. Now, what, what is going on with this COVID thing? Because this is this is the Noah type syndrome right here. Most people don't know it, but I want you to see something. Cow, terrorist, war, natural disasters up here, but these three years is not about natural disasters. So this this COVID 19 wasn't known like no flu. Come on now, let's be honest now. It wasn't like no flu, and God ain't listed in the area of no flu. So what is it then, if it wasn't no flu, and it came in the area of war, terrorists, biological, bioweapon, at war, question mark. Now, am I saying that? Mm, I ain't saying that. I ain't quite that bold on YouTube. Because I know NBC and some of the other trying to convince you differently. But I'm showing you the chart. You draw your conclusion. Have I been wrong so far? I'm all the way here, all the way down. Go do your homework and prove me. Have I been wrong? So if I'm not wrong so far, what's going to make you think I'm wrong in 2020? Tell me. Now, I know they don't want to bring that out like that. Wuhan, China, something, and a laboratory and all this. And for some reason, they show that China was locking their peoples up because of the fact that that done got loose in China. China ain't stupid. Then you hear on the news, well, on the internet, and uh, in the conversation where they feel like the military, American military, caused that to be in China. So if that, if that happened, now I'm not saying this is how it happened. Because I was not there. I'm not in that secret environment or that security environment to know all that. But I'm telling you something about war with this COVID-19. Okay? People, this ain't no regular virus. This ain't no regular flu yet. Because I'm telling you, it got on my behind. And I done had a regular flu. And I realized, wait a minute. This ain't no regular flu, something about this. But I knew something I had to do. And I got my rest. And I got my pH chart with my alkaline level. See, I'm a vegetarian and thought this here too with me. And I made sure I do what's right along with the people that was around me was in it, in this kind of uh, eating and, and understanding and made sure that that thing do not affect me to that level. And I came right on through it. So I'm Hey, I know. So I ain't going about what somebody else say. I know. There's something about this one. I ain't like the rest. 
It kills people in the summertime, in the wintertime, spring and fall. It is killing all kinds. These flus don't go like that. Summertime, that flu is gone. This thing year round. Now you tell me what you think it is. Because I'm all about the truth right now. And I didn't say what it was. I say bioweapon at war. Question mark. And you got to see it, my people. Now let's deal with this. I'd like you to send your donation, tithes, and offering to Louis Armstrong Ministry at 7536 Jana Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Or you can send it at Cross Rock Incorporated at the same address, 7536 Jana Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Okay, uh, Cross Rock Incorporated, you can go to Give LaFi on your mobile app on the charitable and send your donations there. Also, PayPal at ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. That's PayPal, ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. Also, you can go with Cash cash App. With the Cash App, and you got the, uh, let me move this on so I guess you can see this a little bit better. And, and Sister Corinthia have it on on there so you can see. You go with uh, the dollar sign, you go SWAU1954. SWAU1954. And that way you can be able to send it by cash out. And please help sponsor this organization, get this organization rolling in a way that we could be able to, in the very near future, visit your cities, your towns, and really say what we really want to say. You know, I think. Uh, I thank this uh, YouTube channel for at least having us on and letting us be on it. So I'm not going to try to agitate no one and all that. I ain't trying to mess with this and that because I found out that sometimes, you know, you got to be wise. You got to be very wise. Okay? But I want you to think. Don't let people just tell you what's going on. I want you to think. And that's very important right now to think about what you need to think about. Now we're gonna say a little prayer. And, uh, and I thank God for all of you. And I don't want y'all to say, well, real say it's a bioweapon at war. No, 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 the child is showing that. It's showing that. But what I'm saying is that there's a question mark behind it. Is this really a bioweapon? Because I know it don't fit with natural disasters. So, so let them give you some answers to what it is. Let them give you some answers. They already said it came out of the laboratory and all that. So let them give you some answers. It's very important. Okay. Now, with self prayer, and I thank God for this moment of time. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for permitting us to be here. Thank you for giving us opportunity to see truth. We know that you love us, and we love you dearly. We, some individuals, trying to get to know you, so they are really trying to get to know you. Because all these long, long years of being taught different things as growing up as a youth in church and growing up as a young adult in church and around the environment, just being in America, we always knew and understood to call on Jesus. And if you still desire to call on Jesus, keep calling in the back of your head while you call on Jesus. That you will know that you are working toward knowing him who was majestic. Habits take time to break. And no one's saying that you got to stop eating meat overnight. You just got to work on it and realize that you need to get away from it. Get away from eating that kid's cake. My Lord, thank you for being able to open our eyes so we can see truth as a more present. And I thank you for being there for us. That we can realize that God haven't forgot us. That we're not going to be afflicted much longer, that he will give us an opportunity to make our ancestors, our fathers and our mothers of past, we will be able to make them feel happy, that they'll be shouting at them for the joy of what their children have accomplished out there. And I say thank you, Father, for all the good things. Thank you for now and forever. Yo, it's a message from Thoth to Hoodie, Melchizedek, Amias Hermes, Mercury.
Quetzal Kowal, Kula Khan, who commands, we are telling them once, the rise of the children of Israel, Lewis that is,